Hello and welcome to this new episode of the Smarter Tech Podcast. My name is Nick, the EMF guy, you know, I'm the author of the non tinfoil guide to EMFs and an advocate for safe technologies. And this is the last episode of season, what season is this? Of season three of the podcast, which I launched, let me see the first publication. It was at the beginning of 2020. I guess I felt uh, <laughs> a little bit... Uh, stressed from the COVID stuff happening at the time. And I just decided to launch a podcast like a lot of people. Or maybe I had a lot of time on my hand, uh, my hands because I didn't really have anything else to do but to work. But anyhow, this is the last episode of season three. We're at episode number seven and three already. And um, I thought, you know, I'm going to do a top lessons episode like I always do at the end of the year and talk about my next project. So it's, it's gonna be a little bit of a more personal episode for people who follow my work more closely. So if you wanna tune out, uh, I, won't, uh, I won't be angry, don't worry about it, but uh, hopefully you stay to hear about my latest projects and to learn a little bit more about me. Um, I wanted to share one of my big uh, passion that I've developed in 2022, and this is uh, Spartan racing or obstacle racing. Um, and Spartan, I guess Spartan is one of the brands that uh, do obstacle racing because it's an entire sport with different brands like Tough Mudder and, uh, you know, there are several other independent races like uh, Course Extreme in Quebec and different other races like that. And, and the idea is a mix of running and obstacles like monkey bars and carrying heavy stuff like a bucket or sandbag. And um, usually a lot of hills are involved, at least in the Spartan side of things. Uh, going underneath barbed wire, jumping walls and all sorts of stuff that could also be considered, you know, ninja training or stuff like that. So um, why am I talking about this? Well, you know, I had been looking last year at ways I can uh, push my comfort zone a little bit. And for sure, you know, professionally, I think I'm constantly pushing my comfort zone. In 2021, I had the chance to uh, interview Robert F. Kennedy Jr., uh, Dr. Mercola, uh, a lot of people that are really, really known, I guess. And, and for me, it was a huge step, a stepping stone in my career to be able to uh, connect with these people, get endorsed by top doctors, top performers in their in their fields in the last few years, and it was a huge deal. So I think pers professionally, I've been pushing the envelope all the time, but physically, you know, I'm a I'm a weekend warrior type of thing. Well, where I exercise from time to time, and maybe I went to the gym two times per week, and I've been getting pretty strong as a guy that is around 130, 135, small build, 5'4", uh, 5'5", five, 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 um, and I don't know in centimeters, sorry guys for the metric system, but in Quebec somehow we use the American way of saying things. Um, so <clears throat> basically I've been getting stronger, but I didn't really have aim in how I trained. Like I wasn't really excited about getting more performant or increasing the strength of my lungs, of my heart, and all these things that matter. And my hip, uh, my hips were very tight, you know, because I'm sitting at a desk so much. So really how much I exercised did not really mitigate my lifestyle. And my lifestyle is one where I'm an author and I sit in front of a freaking computer for hours on end. And it's not healthy. Our bodies are, are designed to move all day and not sit for eight hours per day or how, how many hours I can be spending. And when I'm not spending time working, I could be spending time organizing the household, doing personal research for my personal interests, uh, sometimes playing video games. So all of these things are also in front of the computer. So I end up spending so much time doing my finances, you know, so I it's not just the work, it's my entire life that seems to revolve around a computer. So I decided to you know, to make change and 
that was back in November of 2021, a year prior, that I decided to enroll in my first Spartan race that was in May in uh, Ottawa, uh, about two hour drive from uh, Montreal. And um, I started running at the beginning of, uh, of, uh, of that year, 2022. And it feels like ages ago, but you know, I ran, it was minus 30 Celsius, almost like, I guess, zero Fahrenheit, freezing cold. I was uh, in my winter gear and feeling the, the burn of that like cold air coming into my lungs and only five to 10 minutes of running on asphalt completely destroyed my ankles at first. So it was a very challenging moment for me to uh, try things where I'm a beginner again. And this is something where I think as I evolve in life, um, I become uh, hyper-specialized. I just turned 35, you know, in, in uh, August of 2022, a few months ago as I'm recording this. And uh, I don't know, it just feels like you accumulate a lot of knowledge and a lot of, uh, you become very competent um, about certain things in particular. Next thing you know, you lean towards these things by default and you avoid the things where you feel very uh, newbie right? A beginner, a complete beginner. So running for me was a big issue. My knee bothered me and I really had, I had to take care of my mobility. I had to take care of my hips. I had to take care of my ankles for the first time in 20 years. And I felt scared of running five minutes. And I told myself, okay, well, if I 34 years old, I feel scared of running five minutes, what's going to happen when I'm 54? 64 in 30 years and I'm oh my god I'm gonna blame my knees and blame my ankles and oh my body is broken no it's not broken you're just not using it right you're, you're sitting at a desk so um, I really wanted to push myself and and I found that when I ran my first Spartan race uh, in May it ended up being way more than this I did a 10 kilometers um, I, I felt ready. I was excited and I did many things that I did not really think I could achieve. For example, for me, jumping the 11 foot, uh, 11 feet wall was fairly easy and I'm five, five, so I can jump. I can, like, it turns out I can jump very high. And, um, some guys were over six feet and they could not do it. They could not pull themselves uh, over over that fence because they had a higher body weight, right? And, and and so I'm very strong for my size, and it was something you know my size has always been kind of a, a downside in my life where I say, okay, well, you know, I don't know, five, you know, small guys are not attractive or something. Like it was really my my. Uh, let's say my background in my in my teenage years where it was seen as somewhat of a handicap being small, right? You're small. I don't know, like the big guys are like the ones that really look manly and all these things, all these fake ideas that we learn through culture. But you know what? After doing that race, I kind of felt, well, you know, my build is kind of advantageous for those types of activities where I can pull my own body weight. I can jump. I'm very strong for my size like I can I can do the 120 pound boulder and I weigh 135 I can carry that stuff I I can do the the bucket carries with 60 pounds which is half body weight for me no problem uh, you know and like my relative strength is very good so I, I really I really felt like it increased my confidence on a physical standpoint and kind of it, it was really the end of a cycle of thinking that my body cannot perform at a higher level because I'm small, you know? Uh, so it, it turns out when I look at a lot of Spartan racers, some of them are very tall, but some of them are kind of small. Uh, one guy I'm following uh, who's one of the top in the world, Leon, Leon Kofold, uh, he's 5'6", uh, 5'7", five, five, I think. So fairly small, small build, ripped to the bone, 
and he can just carry his own body weight so fast. Uh, he's very, very fast. He's one of the best at obstacles in the entire world. And I found inspiration in all those guys that have similar bodies as me, and they are competing and performing very well. And it kind of made me feel a little bit better about my body. So also more responsible towards my body. If I have a next race that I look towards, I have the responsibility of keeping myself in shape, stretching, taking care of my body, getting proper rest, and it makes it more difficult for me if I don't get the rest and I train hard because these days I'm training way more than two times per week. It's more like four times per week. Uh, if I don't sleep properly and take care of my uh, practices like um, doing the brain tap system, which is kind of a meditation uh, aid um, system with lights and, and headphones and all this. You, you got binaural beats and all sorts of things on there. Uh, well, if I, do, I, if I don't do the brain tap, what's going to happen is I feel very fatigued. If I don't get my sleep in, I'll feel very fatigued. So I'm increasing my workload of exercise and then my recovery needs to match that. And it's, it's good. It's good stress for me because um, if I'm, I keep being lazy and I feel okay, what I'm, I'm going to suffer later when I'm all stiff and, and broken and feel, oh, you know, I cannot run with my kid because these 10-year-old these kids are, are just too fast and I'm going to injure myself. I don't want to have that discourse at 40 years old. I want to be performant, happy, feel fast and light and high performance. I want my body to feel like I'm in my teenage years rather than, oh, you know, I'm getting stiff, I'm 34, 35, and now I feel old. No, no, no. This kind of discourse is, is it, it's tempting to, um, to say, oh, I'm not in my 20s anymore. I mean, I, I started hearing that when, when I hang out with 30 years old. The reality is if you spend your 20s at a desk, at 30, you start being injured from that lifestyle and even before that, right? And that that's kind of the, the, the good scenario is you start being injured at 30. Now we have teenagers that are, that have like chronic fatigue and all sorts of bodily dysfunction. So for me, it has been, it has changed a lot of aspects of my life. Um, I did another race in Mont Tremblant in June, which was uh, about 20, three kilometers in the mountains. I did that with my brother. It was completely crazy. And considering I had just started running in January, I mean, I'm an overachiever, but it was really ridiculous to, to attempt that. And I ended up not being injured, being able to really trust my body that I can handle workloads um, physically that are way above my what I consider be, to be my limits. And each time I faced a new limit, I shattered through it uh, with disbelief. Really, wow, I can do that. So pushing your envelope, pushing your comfort zone, and your comfort zone might be different. For, for you, maybe running for one minute is a big deal, or maybe just squatting your own body weight. But what you think you cannot achieve is attainable. It's, it's a matter of perseverance and doing the work. So if you think, oh, I have a bad knee. Okay, well, what does that mean? If it's broken beyond repair and you have like metal plates in there, well, of course, there are some parts you cannot recuperate, but you can make it way more stable. In fact, some people have shattered every limb in their body and after that, they have ran marathons. How? Well, you know, they worked. <laughs> they worked to do the rehab for years and years until they, they're not stiff anymore and they don't hurt as much. And they are they're able to their body is able to go back into balance and to perform even with those injuries. So I found myself stop having excuses for why I cannot de do this thing or that thing. So it was huge for me. Uh, it's still giving me more energy on a regular basis. And I'm very thankful for that new direction in my life. So that's a that's a huge part of this episode is really when I pushed myself physically, I think it just made me a, a better person. Uh, then 
Another thing I'll share, and it will be a little bit quicker because uh, I already have to, to wrap this up and keep it sh on the short side, is many fields of science are starting to figure out that EMFs are a real problem. And that's very nice. There's the nitric oxide depletion angle. I did an interview with Beth Shirley, number 69. I'm gonna share all of this in the show notes. So nitric oxide researchers are starting to realize that um, that is a problem. I don't know if they really attribute it to EMFs yet, but they will once this information reach, reaches them. So that's a huge part of science and that uh, is again, in, in blindfolds towards EMFs, but I think it's gonna be open soon. Uh, brain cancer risks are more and more present. Um, I, I saw news about the increase in glioblastomas, for example, in, uh, in the UK and in France. Male fertility, there's new studies coming so fast that it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. Uh, male fertility, that's well established. This year, especially in 2022, there, there's been this major study on cell phone, uh, on radio frequency radiation being used by your microbiota to talk to each other. And that's episode 70 with Dr. Marco Ruggiero. So the damage to the microbiome or the disruption will be established and the science is evolving. Uh, a lot of re the research around blue light is starting to explode. I see it. I see way more interest in that topic now from scientists and from uh, the average lay people. Uh, and I have these episodes that I recorded the year prior, 63 and 64, with Andy Mont from Bond Charge, uh, which used to be called Blue Blocks. And we talk all about uh, the light research and how to block blue light also. I even saw Dr. Robert Malone, who's uh, one of the early inventors of mRNA technology and, uh, and that kind of thing, who talked about EMFs in a blog post. And I'll link to it as well, uh, make sure to include it. But he realized that EMFs is a big problem and that there's uh, the science and regulatory agencies are heavily corrupted. There's even a top mast cell researcher and mast cell activation syndrome, MCAS, is something that a lot of people are, are mentioning now in, um, let's say, in explaining why people are becoming hypersensitive to EMFs, but also to mold and chemicals. And um, Dr. Theo, uh, Theo uh, um and I'll, I'll, I'll link his name and, and whatnot. I had exchanges with him briefly, but he told me that he wants to maybe publish a paper on EMFs and uh, MCAS before he uh, comments further. But at the moment, we do have rat studies that show that cell phone radiation can cause uh, the mast cell to uh, degranulate. And the way that I understand it is that the mast cell will release histamine and other compounds that are pro-inflammatory. So in other words, you use your phone and your mast cells release that histamine just like it would if it's uh, facing an allergen. Uh, or um, let's say a chemical agent that it considers uh, negative or harmful. So it might be just one more angle and that might explain also uh, why uh, people who hold the phone or put a phone to their head sometimes feel a sensation where it's itchy, right? A histamine reaction. Some people get itching on their body and even uh, like get red spots on their body. Uh, there are even worse scenarios than that in, in electrohypersensitives. So all that to say that scientific awareness is exploding and I'm very happy to see that. Uh, there's also sleep researchers, one of them that I'm in communication with that uh, seem to be in disbelief. I don't really believe that EMS is a big issue, but I'm seeing a little bit of interest or curiosity. At least they're not completely close-minded about the idea. So I'm crossing fingers that we see um, that we see the topic evolving as well. So a lot of things happen in, in 2022. And I wish, I mean, yeah, I, I, I need to take time to look at all the studies, kind of do a blog post about it. But it's almost like my head is spinning about how fast the science is evolving on all of these. And... Another thing that I learned in 2022 more than ever is that using nature's frequencies and man-made frequencies 
like helpful, beneficial technologies is critical to stay healthy. And I'm becoming more and more convinced that these artificial man-made frequencies will be an important part of our survival as a human species, especially if you're not constantly in nature, far away from the man-made radiation, uh, from the electrosmog and light pollution. If you're not in nature getting nature's frequencies, sun, uh, frequencies through the right water, through smelling trees and natural environments, through earthing or grounding your feet, your bare feet on the ground. If you're not doing that regularly, you're in a very artificial environment. I, I often am in cities and I'm surrounded by artificial stuff. One of the ways to combat that is to use other artificial signals that have been shown to be beneficial. One of them is PEMF, Pulse Electromagnetic Fields. For example, I'm using the Flex Pulse product, Flex Pulse J2, that I talked about with uh, Dr. Pollock in a recent episode. I'm going to also link it in the show notes. What it can help you do is, uh, is trigger natural repair mechanism in your body and increase circulation. So it's something to, to use as a like a spot use, let's say, or that particular machine, the Flexpulse J2 uh, or G2, but for other PMF uh, machines or, or systems, there might be other uses that are more like whole body PMF uh, that have clear benefits. Other things like red light therapy, photobiomodulation, or even using the right lighting. Uh, using red light uh, during the day or in the form of, of a lot of near-infrared, uh, like, uh, for example, the photon light. The photon light is one very intense bulb that contains red light and also uh, near and I'm pretty sure far infrared as well. Um, I may be mistaken on that last one, but it causes a lot of heat. So in my mind, if there's heat, like, this is probably a lot of far infrared as also. But basically using that indoors during the day can really help with your energy levels. Uh, and uh, it's now, it's been confirmed since the 2019 that the vast majority of melatonin in your body is not created or just released in the pineal gland, but it is created inside the mitochondria and released by the mitochondria, if I recall correctly. And there's a 2019 paper on that that I'm going to share where it's called uh, subcellular melatonin. And basically they talk about the subcellular melatonin is created when you're exposed to intense light during the day in certain spectrum in particular that correspond to the sun spectrum. So if you get sunlight during the day, you get that melatonin. And then at night, you have that pineal gland melatonin that gets released. So melatonin is important for different reasons. It's not just for sleep. It's a major antioxidant inside your body. It's part of your antioxidant defense system to face uh, cancer risks, chemicals. So we need that melatonin. So getting the right lighting during the day, which are artificial frequencies, man-made machines, it can help. If you live an indoor lifestyle like me, and I try to go outdoors, but I spend at best a few hours per day. So if you're inside, you need to make sure to use the right man-made frequencies and man-made technologies to light your environment the right way. Uh, another one that I'm using is a TANS unit, which is electrical nerve stimulation. I use that for my nervous system. I use the brain tap that I've mentioned in a past episode, which uses, uh, it's kind of, kind of headset that uses sound, light, several layers of technology that are, let's say, in the brain entrainment side of things or brain training. Uh, it can really calm down your nervous system. So we're exposed to all this artificial stuff and our nervous systems are out of whack. We also have technology that can bring it back to balance. I don't advocate that these are a replacement for meditation or spending time in nature, far from it. But they are, there are technologies that can help us mitigate some of the negative effects of a modern lifestyle. And the reality is that 
exploring those, I think it's your personal responsibility. And this is why I've been featuring a lot of those on Smarter Tech and throughout my work, including my uh, my next uh, summit. And I'll, I'll close by just mentioning quickly my next projects. I've got the EMF Hazard Summit 2023, and you're gonna hear about it starting around January 9th. And the summit itself is gonna be live from February 2nd to 5. There are top people in there. Dr. Gaetan Chevalier is gonna talk about EMF harmonizers and are they really valid? Are they really protective? It's a controversial uh, discussion. I think it's gonna spark a lot of controversy, but it's the type of stuff that I need to address. So I cannot get around it no matter how controversial it might be or inconvenient for certain companies. It, w it will be groundbreaking. Dr. Beverly Rubik talks about the biofield. We have Dr. Marco Ruggiero, who's back talking about the microbiome. Uh, there's a lot of tremendous speakers. Dr. Uh, Dr. Eric Zielinski talking about essential oils. I was blown away by his content. There's so many good speakers. Dr. Stephanie McCarter talking about uh, can electrosensitivity be cured? So it's going to be very exciting. It's my biggest project to date, and it's going to also help uh, as a fundraiser for Professor Holly Johansson's research. So it's um, near and dear to my heart. I think it's going to be a massive event, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. So if you hear about it uh, later, maybe there's still time. It's going to be in early February 2023. Um, I'm starting to work on the new book. Um, I'm excited to get started, but I think it's going to be maybe the end of 2023 where I really uh, start diving into it. But I learned so much in the last six years since I first started working on my non tinfoil guy manuscript that uh, I think is going to be groundbreaking. There are so many new things that have come to light. Uh, EMF hazards are clearer than ever before, and also the solutions to combat these hazards also are clearer in my mind. So, uh, the you know, the old book is still valid. I just got my 700 five-star average review on Amazon, so I'm very, very grateful. And um, I also launched a project called EMF Circle, emfcircle.com, where I've been meeting a lot of new people from the community. I'm doing a monthly Q&A and masterclass with my colleague Brian Hoyer from uh, shieldedhealing.com. And uh, yeah, it's been exciting. It's a small uh, community. It's a private type of feel where you have more personal access to me and Brian. And we've been just developing new ideas there and sharing exclusive content. So I hope you can join us on emfcircle.com. And what else did I have? Yeah, I have a lot of travels also. As I'm recording this, I'm in Thailand. I'll be, by the time you listen to this, I'll be in Japan and uh, I have a lot more travel in Asia and Europe in um, basically January to June of 2023. And then I'm going to come back to Montreal back home in July. So I'm looking forward to coming to going back, but also the travels with uh, my wife, Jan and my kiddo, uh, Elliot have been so nice. Um, a lot of very unique moments. Um, we recently got to hang out with elephants in an elephant refuge here in Chiang Mai, uh, Thailand. So it was it was a very precious moment to be able to uh, share all all of this with them. So I'm very grateful for everyone listening to this podcast, sharing, commenting, buying my book, buying my products clicking the link. Sometimes I get a commission on that, supporting my work, donating to the organizations I mentioned, sending words of encouragement and sending constructive feedback, also criticism. I, I welcome all of it. Please reach out, theemfguy.com. Uh, there's a contact form there. I appreciate you so much. And uh, you're the reason I'm doing this. I want to keep doing this work for decades. At the moment, I'm convinced that I have a few decades in me of advocacy work on this topic. I hope that things continue to evolve. And uh, I'm glad to have you on my side listening to it. So, uh, yeah, this is the last episode of the year. And I'm going to see you in 2023 for another season of Smarter Tech. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.